Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. Today and in the upcoming days, I want to take the chance to do a little series, if you will, that just covers the basics of watercolor pencils because oftentimes in my videos I say do this to get texture, uh, do, go left to right to get a smooth finish, but I never really sat down and explained step by step how to achieve each and one of these techniques and what they give you. In today's video, I'll be exploring layering. So I take a very basic sketchbook, it's against an Excel, it's what is most common, why I see the most route the internet it's very cheap so from my understanding this was the most widely available and i'll be using just one pencil throughout this whole video go out and choose your favorite color color in my case that's dark tail green and i start by coloring the entirety of my page i use very very little pressure on the bottom and on the mid section and i'm mostly going to focus coloring the top side of my paper i have also taped down my page so it stays flat once i add water because since it is the cheapest sketchbook you can find you do need a bit extra help to achieve good results with it in this case taping it down will help us now just on the dry face that i have not yet activated this background you can see the bottom is higher than the top the key to building multiple layers with watercolor pencils is you always need the bottom where you will be painting your layers to be lighter because otherwise if you make it all one solid block of color and you go on trying to build layers well you will you will not be able to see the new layers. Now my tool of choice is a reservoir brush because I believe this was the most beginner friendly watercolor pencils are the media that dries the fastest and this kind of brush just gives you a constant workflow and helps avoid your paint drying while you do other stuff. Or you just may be a complete beginner and want to take things slowly. You do not need this specific kind of brush but in my opinion it does make things easier now to blend the background and keep that gradient look i start from the bottom upwards and horizontal motions if i were to start from the top downwards then i would get one solid block of color i would not get this very nice soft gradation of the colors I also go a couple of times from the bottom upwards, clean my brush on a napkin, repeat from the bottom upwards, just to make sure everything is completely smooth. It is very, very important to wait in between layers for them to completely and fully dry. So once my background has dried, I take my green and I do a very light mountain sketch where the green from the background has started to dilute down and you would be able to see my mountain. I do a very basic shape, if drawing is not your thing there is going to be a traceable available at my Patreon page where we also do full time tutorials of my painting videos, offer digital downloads and that kind of goodies, so if you're interested in that and choosing to support me and the channel you can find links down in the description. Now back to our tutorial here. I only color the top of the mountain i do not color the entire page i just do about three to five centimeters the reason being like i said earlier you want the remaining area where you will place your next layers to be lighter than said layers now for the mountains i do start from the edge from where it is the darkest because i want a crisp sharp look then with a wet brush i just blend it downwards it is going to make the bomb slightly darker but since i do not apply any extra color beneath the mountain so it is not going to make it dark to the point you won't be able to see next mountains now again a crucial step wait for it to completely dry you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer on medium settings or just wait for it to air dry you can do either one whichever you prefer it does not matter for this technique now for the second layer well actually third if we count the background i am going to add some tiny tiny details because it is going to be closer to us towards the viewer so you will start to see some very faint details i had not sharpened my pencil through any point in this video i used a blunt tip to color the sky in the first mountain and do the second one However, for these tiny details, for these tiny tiny trees I am making, I did sharpen it 
you only need a sharp point if you will be doing small detail if you will be doing backgrounds then please don't sharpen it because you just end up wasting a perfectly good tip and also material because this is paint and now just like for the first mountain i only color the first couple of centimeters of it and i do not apply any color downwards towards the bottom of the page again i start from the edge blending downwards with just some water i'm not going to go over the trees because they're very very tiny and it would not really make a difference because like i said they're very tiny once everything has completely dried i take my pencil with a sharp Point, I start drawing some treetops. Since this is the final layer and the closest we are going to be towards the viewer, you will start seeing a lot of detail. And I only do the treetops first just so I know how many trees I want and where to place them before I color the entirety of the palm of my page with the stalo green. And also since this is the final layer, you can use as much pressure as you want. You can apply a lot of pressure, but since we did not use any color on this bottom portion of our page, you can also get away with using very little pressure. So in this case, it's completely up to personal preference. That is why I believe this is a very beginner-friendly guide because you still you don't need to worry about regulating yourself with pressure as long as your pencils are good quality and nicely saturated you don't need to worry about it the trees themselves i do make a straight line just to sort of know where i want to place them and then i zigzag over those lines to add some foliage once i finish placing them i just color the entire bottom of the page with this color and then to activate I do start from the trees because they're larger than the previous ones and I want to keep this uniform watercolor landscape look throughout my painting. I don't want the pencil markings to be visible so that's why I start blending from the trees towards the final mountaintop and then that solid block of color we have on the palm. And with some excess paint that I have left on my brush, I do a couple of eagles or birdies in the sky because why not? And that is it. I hope you found this video useful. I do plan on doing the next one about textures, why you need them and how to easily achieve them for like water, trees, foliage, skies, etc. Let me know what you think and we'll see each other in the next video. Bye bye!